How's it going? It's that time of year again where you have to start your holiday shopping. All these sales are coming out. And before you go and spend all of your money on others, it's time for you to spend money on yourself first. And so if you're looking for some bookshelf speakers around the $500 price point, that's what this video is all about. Now, I've gotten the chance to review a ton of speakers over the past four or five years. And so these are my favorites under $500 as of today in 2022. So why $500? I mean, under $500, you can get some pretty decent speakers. I mean, very good value. That's usually where the highest value to performance ratio is, is under $500. But above $500, you do get better speakers. And so none of these speakers that you're gonna find here today are gonna be in the $200 or $100 price point. And it's not because those, you know, because I'm hating on those price points, it's not that. It's more that those actually just don't perform as well as something in the $500 price point. And so let's get into it and let's start naming off my top five, starting with number one. You've heard it before. Right now, it's the Kali Audio LP6 V2. This should be of no surprise to you if you've been to my speaker leaderboard where I show the various speakers and I rank them from best to worst and in various categories. So here, under $500, the LP6 V2, second edition, second wave. And so right now they're on sale, 149 bucks each. So for two, $300. That is an amazing deal. So this is not just a passive speaker. This is an active speaker. It's meant for studio monitoring. And so it does have a built-in amplifier. You don't have to go and search for a small class D amplifier or you know, a class AB that I'd usually recommend with this is something like the Yamaha AS501. That's a great amp, but it's extra. You have to add that on to the cost. And so this is included. I don't know how they do it at this price point, to be honest. Uh, it has DSP, so it can correct for various areas where you may place the speaker. It does have a six and a half inch woofer and a one inch soft dome tweeter with a waveguide. It is front ported, just excellent guys. So one of my pet peeves is amplifier hiss. And I can say that this is a much quieter amplifier than their original V1 version. I'm happy they did that. Another thing about an active speaker is that it also has active crossovers, meaning that it's more efficient use of the amplifier power because it doesn't have to go through any passive network. So real quickly, I'm going to show you some measurements. And what we're seeing here in the black is the plus or minus 3 dB point. And if a speaker can stay within that, that's a pretty darn good speaker. Now, this dash line is plus or minus 1.5 dB from the reference, which is 85 decibels. If it can stay within that, that's that's an excellent speaker. Very few speakers really do that. This red line here shows the minus six dB point and the minus 10 dB point, and we'll get into that in a second. But what you'll notice here is this speaker is definitely staying within plus or minus three dB, but it's also staying within the plus or minus 1.5 dB as well. So that's just amazing for a speaker, just not even in this price point, for any speaker that I've reviewed, very few can stay within plus or minus 1.5 dB. That's amazing, but that's also because this is DSP corrected. So they've been able to correct some of those physical type of issues that are correctable with DSP. A couple things I look for in a speaker is the tonal balance, which is how much bass is there relative to the high frequency. So on the left here, these are the bass frequencies, mid range and high frequencies here. So what I would prefer to see is either a flat or a downward sloping line. Either of those is fine with me. Flat is the best for a near field measurement. For the bass response, the minus three dB point, which is where they typically should calculate where the bass starts to roll off. Here it's showing at 43.5 Hertz, the minus six dB point, which is where you shouldn't necessarily measure from, but a lot of people, a lot of companies use that spec to make themselves look better, but it's at 39.4 Hertz and the minus 10 dB point, which you definitely should not be using if you're a company is at 35.6 Hertz. Now the minus 10 dB point is still important because that's the lowest possible base that you'll probably hear from that speaker in a room. So it's important for you to know, but just, know that it's not the standard way that companies should be measuring their base. So 35 Hertz, 
That's what you'll get from the Kali Audio. So this is a near field measurement in room. It's not an anechoic measurement. So just take it with a grain of salt. But I do these just to give you an idea of what kind of performance you can possibly expect from a speaker like this. All these speakers are on my speaker leaderboard where I rank the speakers that I review from best to worst. And you can see here the LP6 V2 is all across the top here in various categories. Now looking at the speaker leaderboard, you would assume that the next up is the Monolith Encore B6, but you'd be wrong. It is actually this Polk Reserve R200. So I was hesitant to say under $500 because if you're searching for a speaker and you're right around that price range and it's 500 versus 565, I know that $65 is, yeah, you know, you don't want to spend it all the time, but this was originally a $699 speaker. And at that price point, I was still very impressed with it. So this is also a large speaker, a six and a half inch. This one is passive. So you'll need an amplifier for this. And it's also using a ring radiator tweeter. Lots of cool tech here. They have a port that is supposed to reduce the turbulence coming out. So you'll get less port chuffing. And I have noticed that that, that kind of works. Overall, I like this because it wasn't overly hard to drive. It could play loud without distorting. It had some deep bass, had a nice tonal balance to it. Not a perfect response as we'll see right now, but at 565, Ooh, that's, I mean, from 700 to 565 is a pretty big jump. So if you were looking into these, it's kind of a good time right now to buy them. On my speaker leaderboard, the Polk Reserve R200 ranked pretty high, but it was also competing here in the under $1,000 category. The reason I like these is because they look good, they felt solid, and they had a good sound. They had a tonality that I thought was pleasing. Highs were clear, the bass could hit pretty deep, and yeah, overall, I thought it was a good value. Taking a look at its frequency response right here, you can tell that it's not as flat as that Kali Audio. Why is that? It's because this is a passive speaker. It doesn't have any DSP to correct it. Now, if I applied DSP to this, yeah, maybe I could get it closer to what the Kali Audio was also offering. So you'll see here that the bass is boosted. It does have a dip here in the crossover region and the treble comes right back up after that. So not a perfect response, but compared to the Kali Audio LP6 V2, you'll notice that it does have more deep bass extension. So these measurements that I'm showing you right now are including the port. I just thought it would be fair considering that the LP6 has a front facing port and it was included in the measurement. So I did measure the port on the back of some of these speakers. If you take a look at this, the pole can stay within plus or minus three dB. It doesn't really stay within plus or minus 1.5 like the Kali does. And again, this is a passive speaker. What you get in return, because it's a pretty large speaker, has a nice beefy driver on there, is the minus three dB point is here at 36 Hertz. The minus six dB point, 32 Hertz, and the minus 10 dB point, all the way down to 26 Hertz. That means that's the lowest possible bass that you will hear from the speaker in a room based on my measurements. All right, so next up on my list is the Monolith Encore B6. And this is the Encore series. Right now, let's take a look. These are on sale, 139 bucks each. Yeah, all right. So that is very inexpensive. $280 gets you a pair of nice speakers. Now, why would you get this over the Kali Audio? If you're using these for a home theater and you want speakers that are all matched, well, it's probably better to go with something like this just because they do have a center channel. They have smaller speakers that you can use for surrounds, things like that. They actually have, uh, they have floor standing speakers that also match the timbre of this one. So I can see why somebody would wanna stick within this family. If you do go with a bookshelf speaker like this, the good thing is that you can upgrade. So you may start off with this initially, then later on get the floor standards and then these can be your surrounds. But 139 bucks, this is a pretty crazy deal. You know, I think they look pretty nice. They're kind of plain, but the top has a nice finish to it. I think they're good looking speakers. And I've been using these for a while as my surrounds and I was impressed with these. And I'll show you why real quick. So I'm just playing this one speaker, no subs. Got it turned up pretty loud. I want to see what it can do. And my wife just messaged me. It's like massaging my feet in the kitchen. It's crazy. I can feel it on my, under, on my feet right now. Like it's massaging my feet. Is that the purpose? 
Yeah. <laughs> so when you say you can hear from the kitchen, this is a new one. You can feel it from the kitchen. <laughs> You guys know I like bass, and these have a lot of bass, which, looking at the graphs right now, won't really seem like they do, but you'll see why I say that in a second. The other thing that I like about this is that they are correctable with EQ. So if you do plan on using these with an AVR for home theater, most of those have some EQ calibration built in. You can use that if you know how, if you know what you're doing, you can get a very good sound out of these. And this is actually the set that I'm using in my home theater right now. I have the floor standards, I have them all EQ'd and I've shown many people and so far everybody's been pretty impressed with them. All right, so taking a look at a much less expensive speaker. So remember the Polk R200 originally were around 700 bucks. Right now we're taking a look at a pair that's around less than half the price. So here we have the Monolith Encore B6. And yeah, let's take a look at that by itself. So first thing you'll notice, the Polk has way more bass in this region, right? So, you know, I said that there was a lot of bass. That doesn't, I don't, where's that bass? I'll show you in a second. So take a look here. Most of the time it's staying within the plus or minus three dB point. It does have a little bit of bass boost here. But actually, some of it is actually staying here within the plus or minus 1.5 dB point. So I like that. Remember, this is a very affordable speaker. This is actually the least expensive speaker that I have on this entire list. Now, the minus 3 dB point is showing around here at 64 hertz. That's not overly impressive, right? And that starts to drop off. But here's what I did notice when I was listening to it you notice it comes back up and I think this is where the port comes in, which is kind of weird. The port usually blends seamlessly with the rest. And this could have just been my measurement because I have seen some where this is a little bit more smoothed out. Actually, my buddy Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner reviewed this and he has a $100,000 Clipple machine here. And this is his measurement, very reliable measurement. And you can see exactly what I'm saying where it was a smoother drop off here. Right, so at m minus three dB, you know, I was only showing 64.5, but that's because I was probably only measuring the woofer on the front. Whereas including the port, which is what you'll hear in a room, at minus six dB, I'm still here, I'm at 30 Hertz. What, right? At minus 10 dB, that port is still having an effect and it was measuring down to 23 Hertz. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's because it's a pretty large enclosure and it's tuned very low. I was hearing really deep bass. Now, why is that important? It's because if you're not looking to spend a ton of money, you know, having to buy a sub, that's a that's a big cost. So if you don't have to buy a sub, you can hear some of that deep bass in some of the tracks and some movies. That's an excellent value proposition. So I like, I really like these. You know, I recommend these all the time. So definitely at this price point, I would consider buying a pair if you're interested. Next up is the Wharfdale Diamond 12.1. And so right now, there's only one more. Uh, they're 449. And the thing I liked about these, I thought that they had a nice finish to them. They looked cool. And yeah, overall, they had a good tonality, good sound. I've never had a Wharfdale speaker that I didn't like the sound of. And what's interesting here is I measured these. And later on, I reviewed the Polk Audio speaker. And I was like, hold on a second. This reminds me of a different speaker. It reminds me of this Wharfdale. It's kind of crazy because they don't really look like the same speaker. This is a smaller driver here. It's a five and a quarter, a one inch soft dome tweeter, not a ring radiator like the other one. But let's take a look. Uh, this actually has some cool uh, terminals on the back too. Check those out. So dual binding posts, very nice finish on here. Um, the one that I got was not this color, but it did have a faux veneer and the front was shiny. So a little different than what we're looking at here. Let's take a look at the frequency response. So here's the Wharfdale diamond, including the port. All right, small speaker, but you'll notice, doesn't this kind of look familiar? Doesn't it kind of look like this one here, the Polk R200? Similar, right? It's kind of boosted here. You get this dip around the crossover region, not ideal, but you know, some speaker designers like to do that. 
and then the trouble comes back up. Real interesting, right? So there's a response. It's mostly staying within plus or minus 3 dB, which is what we're looking for. Now, I could show you some other speakers that are reviewed that are all over the place. So I want you to keep in mind that this is all relative. So it's not really staying within plus or minus 1.5 like the Kali was. Let's take a look at the bass. Bass is minus 3 dB at 46.5. Pretty nice for a small woofer. The minus 6 dB point, 41.9. Now, I don't have a minus 10 dB point because I remember at this time, uh, the noise floor was kind of high, meaning my air conditioning was on, things like that. And so you see, this is probably my air conditioning. So I don't really have a good um, a good measurement for this. I had to keep it quiet at that time. I think we had a, a new baby at the time. So anyway, um, if we just kind of follow the trend here, you probably expect the minus 10 dB to be here, you know, maybe 34, which is still low, pretty low base. Right. So keep in mind, I need you guys to remember that minus 10 dB doesn't mean that that's like where the bass is hitting crazy hard. It just means that that's audible bass. So yeah, that's the Wharfdale. I like those. I'll link to my review of all of these down below, as well as links, affiliate links to all of these as well, if you're interested in purchasing them. So next up on the under $500 list here on my leaderboard was the Q Acoustics 3030i. Now this was originally under $500. Right now, it's actually m more expensive. So, uh, I don't love that. I don't love that when the price goes up on something because when I reviewed it, it was at $499 and that's, you know, that's what I was looking at it with that price point in mind. Now that it's even $50 more, you know, I feel like at this time, I would expect things to kind of go on sale, right? Even if the price went up for shipping costs or whatever, I expect the price to go down. So. In that case, kind of, you know, I like these speakers enough. I like them enough. I thought they sounded good. They're pretty big speakers. They have bass, all that. Yeah, I thought they were pretty good speakers. The the treble, what is, let's see if I have a measurement of this. Yeah, I do. So the measurement on this is, yeah, it's staying within plus or minus 3 dB. The measurement's pretty good, right? There's no complaints about the measurement, you know. Um, you do hear bass. You know, the minus 3 dB point, let's just be uh, generous here, 42.9 minus 6 dB around 32 and minus 10 at 25. So you get deep bass extension, all that. I thought it was a good speaker and I liked that it had stands to match. I just didn't love that the price was a little higher. Hopefully it goes on sale. So we'll have to wait and see for that. Right under that is the final speaker. We're going old school, the ELAC UB5, the original UB5. This is one of the first speakers that I purchased with my own money and I had to spend 500 bucks right now. That was like five years ago. I spent 500 bucks. You're going to go and spend less than I did back then. And it's still the same speaker. So 330 bucks. Yeah, that's, that's a deal. The lowest that you'll usually see this is around 350 when they go on sale. So right now, 326, this is the, probably the lowest that you're going to find it brand new. So this is one of Andrew Jones's original speakers when he was at ELAC, just came from Pioneer. He wanted to show that he could do just as well with maybe a little bit of a higher price point. And he came up with these UB5s and these were amazing because they have a five and a quarter woofer, a four and a half inch concentric driver with a tweeter in the middle. So this is actually a three way speaker. So that requires more crossover components that increases the cost. And still it was competing against two-way speakers in the same price range. So the concentric is cool because the mid-range and tweeter acts as a point source. His new speaker is called source point. So he likes these concentric speakers. The good thing about a point source speaker is like the Kali Audio IN5, not the LP6, but their IN5, which is also concentric, they call it coincident, is that both sounds from the tweeter and the mid-range hit your ear at the same time versus on a typical speaker, the woofer and the tweeter, depending on where you're at, if you're above, below, to the side of it, they can hit your ear at slightly different times and it's noticeable. So these are more forgiving if you have to move left, right, up, down. And so that's why I like concentric drivers. I'm a fan of concentric. My whole room here, yeah, all of them are concentric drivers. 
just because I need good off-axis response, and that's what you get with these. It did have a rear port and some of the nicest binding posts I found, even on more expensive speakers. They're even their newer UB5s don't have binding posts as nice as this one. So they really went all out. I think that they probably ate the cost on a lot of stuff just because it was kind of overbuilt for the price at the time. It even had a magnetic grill, which the 2.0 version did not. And I kind of made fun of them for that. And yeah, yeah, these are awesome. These are classic speakers and I still love them to this day. A lot of people like the speaker and let's take a look at the measurements and see if there was any reason for that. And there it is in green. And yeah, so what we find here, a lot of people called it a laid back speaker, meaning that the treble was rolled off. And so Andrew Jones did that on purpose because he said, you know what? I know where most people are gonna put this. It's gonna be near a wall, you know, it's gonna have reflections. This is not a perfect scenario. So he wanted to mitigate the extra treble response by making a speaker that was a little bit more rolled off. And I have noticed compared to some of the other speakers that I have that maybe the treble is a little bit rolled off. And I certainly, in terms of tonality that I was wanting to get out of that and making it an enjoyable to listen speaker, I certainly erred on the treble being, uh, let's say on the side flat to low rather than flat to high. I don't like aggressive treble. And I also recognize that the likely partnering equipment, the likely quality of the music that's being played, i.e. not audiophile type things, um, they can sound even worse if you've got aggressive treble. Now, again, there are speakers on the market that are always more aggressive treble, and some people like that. That's fine. It's not what I was looking for. So some people thought it was a dark speaker. A lot of people, depending on their room, if it was very reflective, they thought it was a very nice sounding speaker. So there's pros and cons to trying to, you know, trying to make it sound good for certain groups of people because somebody else who doesn't have that same room might not like the sound. But what I definitely like is bass response. So overall, this is pretty linear, right? Most of it is staying plus or minus 3 dB until you get to the tweeter region above five kilohertz then it's a little bit below that. And so this is correctable using DSP. You can boost that a little bit. And so that helps. The newer ones actually do have a flatter response across the treble region, but I felt like they lost some of their magic. They went front ported and it just lost a little bit of the magic that this had, which is that it had pretty amazing bass down to, we'll see right now, but it had a very good tonality, in my opinion, where it had bass that you wouldn't expect from a speaker this size and this price. I keep saying that just because you don't wanna have to buy a sub if you're looking to stay within a particular budget. If you are gonna get a sub, then you don't, it doesn't matter. Just get any of these, throw in a sub, you're fine. Who cares about the bass so much, right? So if we take a look here, minus three dB point, we're looking at 39.9 Hertz, minus six dB at 33, and minus 10 is at 27 Hertz. So everything is just pretty smooth on this. And that's what I remember hearing from the speaker. It's a nice, smooth presentation. And yeah, you know, just pretty much anything you throw at it. If it's bad recording with harsh treble, don't even worry about it. Trouble's rolled off, <laughs> you're good to go. A lot of people didn't like it just because it lacked detail. A lot of times you'd see reviewers compare this with a clips just because it's almost like the exact opposite. The clips had a rising treble response. So to compare them back and forth, you'd hear one speaker that was very, very bright, right? Oh, all this detail, but then it could be a little bit fatiguing. This ELAC speaker, not so fatiguing, but also maybe you're missing out on some detail. So it was a little bit of a trade-off and those would always go head to head. So yeah, those are my recommendations for speakers around $500. What's interesting is we have a pretty wide range from the monolith that come out to $280 for a pair, all the way up to the Polk, which are $565 a pair. So even then, that's still a big jump between those two. But yeah, the fact that you can get something within this price range that is easy to recommend, that's exciting for all of us. And so I'm excited for you guys. If this is your first stereo or if you're looking to upgrade, 
I'm excited. Any of these, if you showed me a picture and you said, hey, this is what I got, I'd be, oh man, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. I know you're gonna get a good sound. As long as you set them up right in the room, you're gonna have a great experience. So anyway, I'll leave a link down below to all of these if you're interested in purchasing them. These are affiliate links. If you have any questions, also make sure to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. Anyway, take care, bye-bye.